This is yeah. Nicola Cranmer, General Manager of Exergy 2012, and she's kind enough to join us today. And so I just want to get right into this interview like I always do. You are one of the few women owners and directors that have developed a, um, a generation of women cycling. When was the pivotal moment in your career that you felt like this was your calling, where this is what you knew you wanted to do? I used to be a professional mountain bike racer years ago in the late 80s, early 90s. And, um, you know, I didn't really notice back then. I mean, I was, I was so busy riding my bike and having fun, I didn't notice the challenges that female athletes were presented with. Um, and prior to that, I, my career was in horse racing in England. And there's a lot of parallels between that sport and, and cycling. And actually, um, most most sports where the, the men are treated better and they have much more opportunity than the women. Um, fast forward to about eight years ago and I was um, just getting back into bike racing a little bit for fun and I was on a co-ed team and our small regional women's team was doing much better but the men were getting all the support. So I just about had enough of it and one day said okay I'm going to start my own team. So that's how it started. Very uh, small regional team but we happened to um, end up with some riders like Shelley Olds and Megan Garnier and the Drum Sisters, Rachel Lloyd. It just uh, happens that in Northern California there's such a, um, a you know, a, a rich community of cyclists. Mm-hmm. And so then it's, it's organically grown from there. For the last seven years it's been increasing every year. Yeah, you have a hell of a program. You're also um, on the United States Cycling Committee and I guess you're on your second year and you're on the Pro Road Committee. And I listened to an interview the other day, it sounded like your voice was just kind of like chatter or just conversation. It really wasn't being heard. Or that's the way I took it anyway. Are you, are you making any ground with, with, with what needs to be done in women's cycling now? Yeah, I think so. I, I think um, this pretty much 2012 for me, I was buried in the changes in our team and the Olympics and it was um, a really busy year, very successful year for us, but a very busy year. And now it's calmed down a little bit, and I'm taking a look at what's going on in women's cycling, as are you know a few other women around the world in, in different teams, either in management or as um, athletes. And yeah, I mean, I think now with this big purging of cycling and all these changes that are happening, now is a good time to um, focus on women's cycling and make some changes. I think it's um, a better time for us to have our voice heard. So yeah, I mean, there's definitely some progress that's being made, um, some action items that will be um, implemented over the next few months um, through USA Cycling and then hopefully through US, uh, UCI, some of the um, initiatives that we're working on. So um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see, but I, I'm feeling pretty good about it right now. Well, if you had the magic stick for a day, what are the two changes that you would make immediately? Well, <laughs> oh my, there's there's so many. Um, shuffle them all around and see what comes out on top would be perhaps um, including more women's races and alongside with the big men's races. Um, standalone races are great. Like the Exegy Tour is phenomenal. Um, it's not you know, in America, that's not going to come around that often. Um, so putting us with, the, you know, ha- having a women's race at the Tour of Utah and U.S. Pro Challenge and um, Amgen Tour of California is certainly important. And uh, the second one would be changing the, the age range, the age percentages for the UCI women's teams. Um, right now it stands that the majority of the riders need to be under 28. And, um, you know, I'd sp- I've spoken about this before, but female athletes mature much later than men's athlete, men at male athletes. And I think this rule was put in place for, for men. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't apply to women. And um, we want to encourage development. So taking away that the t- below 28 is, is not necessarily a good thing, but just shifting around the percentages. So the majority of the team is um, doesn't have to be under 28. There's a lot of mature female athletes that are just um, even in a development phase over 28 years old um, and then they don't mature as athletes till their late 30s so that, that could be changed. I think that could 
I think that could happen in the next few months. Oh, that's great. Um, if I'm a young lady, which I'm not, but if I was and I'm looking for an Olympic team, what, what, what does it take to make your squad? And is there any politics that play a role in it, or is it just the best of the best? Go. For our squad? Um, yeah, there's absolutely no politics. Um, first of all, you know, we really look at personality. Um, we have to spend time with these people. Sure. And, you know, it's going on the road with people that might be really talented as an athlete but not the best personalities doesn't, doesn't bode well for the rest of the team. I mean, it doesn't create a you know, cohesive experience for the other team members. So that's important. Um, obviously talent is, is hugely important, but more so than that, I think, you know, working with athletes like Lauren Tamayo and Kristen Armstrong and, and some of the other team members too, I mean, those two spring to mind because of their recent Olympic success and, and, and you know, that plays into the, the Olympic question. Um, being very detail oriented is of utmost importance. I think a lot of females are equal in ability, um, but it's where you can gain the millimeters, the percentages that all add up to you being a champion. Um, it takes an incredible amount of sacrifice from an individual. Not a lot of people can do that. You'll be missing birthday parties, weddings, um, you name it, fun, fun events where you have to say, no, sorry, I'm training and, and this is really important. And, you know, it's easy to say yes to one thing and you think, oh, it won't matter, but you keep doing that and it adds up and you will not be successful. Um, it doesn't mean you can't have fun along the way, but there's a certain level of, of commitment and sacrifice that doesn't come around very often. So I look for that and Kristen Armstrong has taught me well in, in that area. Oh, that's great. That's good information. Uh, now I have a question. You got you got some camps coming up later on, after the beginning of the year, and your team camps. And I always like to get with you're you're, you're the boss, so yes. I always like to get with with people like you. And I I want to know what the tone is like in those meetings, and and if and if I were sitting in one of those meetings, what could you teach me about sacrifice? In a meeting at a team camp, yeah, you mean? Yeah, like, like all the girls are just getting to know each other or they know each other, but you have new additions, you have people who are in, people who are out. Right. What that, what, how do you bring all those girls together and how do you teach them about sacrifice? Well, my role over the last few years have, has changed a lot. My job is becoming more corporate, so I would hire people to do that. Um. <laughs> I'm sure you're good at it, though. <laughs> no, it's, you know, people management actually is not my area of expertise. I'm, I'm a really hard worker and this year with the team growing and adding the adding of staff, I realized that that's not one of my strengths. Um, I enjoy people. I'm great working with sponsors. Um, I'm a doer and I, I love to take care of things, but sort of managing and delegating is not a strength. Um, bringing a team together is... It's a, it's a very, very special skill. Um, Kristen Armstrong, the last couple of years, has been very focused on herself um, with reason, with very good reason. It's what it takes to you know, be an Olympian. Lauren Tamayo, the same. Um, we really missed her this year as part of our program. She was whisked off to an island and you know, with her teammates where they basically were on the track for a few months together and so she was very isolated. She's she's um, a great team player. She has the ability to be a strong leader on the road and bring a team together. Kristen Armstrong can do the same thing and really it's the director that works directly with the riders now in, in forming the cohesive unit but um, we have a, a wonderful friend of the team, Eric Plantenberg, who he's, he's really good at um, taking individuals through exercises, team build, building exercises, and um, we talk about sacrifice and, and being a team player, but it's it takes, it's a very special skill to bring a team together, and I think that over the, over the years, on paper, we've not had the strongest team, um, particularly when we were Peanut Butter & Co. 2012, 
we had a lot of young riders and a couple of um, you know very talented riders but it was being a cohesive unit that had us winning races everywhere we went. I mean, we I remember a perfect example was Mara Abbott at Cascade and she had four teammates and we were up against teams of eight, you know, Tibco and Cola Vida at the time, but it was just um, the fact that, you know, Kristen Armstrong spoke to those individuals on the team and, and got the best out of each of them for a common goal and that was to help Mara win the race. Um, so yeah, that's a long that's answer good. to that's really, that. Question. No, that's really good information. Um, what is your most memorable moment in cycling? Wow, <laughs> interesting question. There's been there's been so many of them, and I think reflecting on memorable moments, um, they don't always feel like they're the most memorable moments while they're happening. Um, certainly running Kristen Armstrong's son across Hampton Court to her arms at the podium mm -hmm. of the Olympics cool. was pretty special. That ended up being a Visa commercial, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, at the time, it was when you know the whole backstory of her husband Joe and myself trying to get her son to her on the podium that day, um, it was really stressful, really stressful. But looking back, that's a goal that will really stick in my mind. It's um, something that she wanted. It was what motivated her to go for gold again. And it was that was a really special moment. But there's been there's been a lot of them, particularly when we were a regional team and you know our, our basically our home track was Hellier Velodrome and we saw a lot of success there and we made some really huge leaps um, within a few months from being a regional team to a UCI track trade team and going to a World Cup and seeing one of my riders get on a World Cup podium for the first time um, was phenomenal for me and, and that was uh, Shelly Olds um, and the way we had got to those World Cups we, we threw barbecues at the track and held races to raise funds to get us to World Cups so that that meant a lot to me um, there were a lot of people involved in that process it was truly a community effort it was really a team effort um, to get to get us to that point so that was really much appreciated and I mean, you can go out and win races if you have a big budget. You can buy riders, but particularly those those early days, we were really scrapping for everything, and um, those meant a lot to me. And then, you know, fast forward the London Olympics and a gold medal. So it's, amazing. it's yeah, those That's were amazing. Be Let me. Who's in your opinion? You have your thumb on the pulse of um, women cycling. Who's the next Kristen Armstrong? I mean, she she can't do it forever. Who's coming up in the ranks, in your opinion? Well, um, the obvious person would be Evelyn Stevens. Um, you know, she's a phenomenal athlete and a natural and tennis background. She actually guest rode for our team in San Rafael a few years ago. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to say too much now, but <laughs> when our roster comes out, in a couple of weeks there'll be some people on there that you probably have never heard of and it's really exciting to see what's coming up for the future of American cycling that's great yeah. well I want to thank you for joining cycling illustrated and I pretty much answered or ask all of my questions and you answered them is there anything else that you wanted to add um, I do want to say congratulations on um, Cycling Illustrated and I'm really stoked to see a lot of women's content and you know I really appreciate that and I know a lot of women cyclists or all women cyclists would appreciate, appreciate it too so I mean good job there. Thank you very much.